Um, Representative Jan Schakowsky, who is, a co, uh, is the House sponsor of uh, Senator Feinstein's bill, is stuck in an Energy and Commerce Committee markup advocating for consumers. Um, so she won't be able to make it. So I'd like to invite up Judy Dugan to summarize the report Consumer Watchdog is releasing today and, uh, and introduce the panel. Uh, Senator, the Senator has uh, really covered all the high points of uh, why we need to change this. I'll just slash as I go here. Uh, we know uh, health insurance premiums way up. We also know health insurance company profits way up all the way through the uh, recession. No problem for health insurers because our premiums are going up at a double digit rate. Uh, Consumer Watchdog began this report after punishing rounds of double-digit health insurance rate hikes in California. Our home state has strong, effective rate regulation in property and casualty markets. But our regulators have almost no power beyond job owning to stop unreasonable or unjustified rate increases in health insurance. We also saw Massachusetts breaking the state's budget to support its health reforms, even with most of the state's citizens covered. Insurers continue to drive up rates far beyond expectations. Increasingly, individuals are being excused from the purchase mandate due to unaffordability in Massachusetts. Our report, Health Reform and Insurance Regulation, can't have one without the other, looks at what other states are doing for good and for ill, and concludes that even the best regulated states lack key elements that have made California's property insurance regulation so successful. We offer here a regulatory model for states to bring health insurance rates under control, retain healthy competition, and give insurers reason to be partners in controlling overall health care costs. One, the Massachusetts mandate model did not control premiums. Massachusetts health reform law in 2006 was the model for federal reform. Supporters of a purchase mandate at the time argued that it would bring healthy people into the system and moderate insurance costs and rates. That did not happen. The state groaned under the cost, pushing Massachusetts to start requiring insurance companies to justify their rates in 2010. Since then, rate increases for small companies that were as high as 25% in 2010 were all below 10% in 2011 because of rate regulation. Number two, states moving to add or strengthen regulation are bringing down insurance rate increases. States moving to prior approval regulation or enforcing laws already on the books are succeeding in holding down the rate of increase. In New York, new rate requests were trimmed by an average 25% after the state's prior approval law was reinstated in 2010. Oregon has trimmed rate requests by the largest insurer in the individual market by more than 25% since 2008. And number three, California property insurance regulation holds keys for successful oversight of health insurance. California's voter-approved Proposition 103 regulates auto homeowners in business, but not health insurance. It requires prior approval of every rate change by the insurance commissioner. It prevents insurers from passing excessive administrative costs onto consumers through their rates. Uh, it allows consumers to independently challenge rates and to be reimbursed for their time, which we find to be critical. We find that because of strong similarities in the financial structure of all insurance markets, most of Proposition 103's protections are translatable to health insurance. Number four, federal health reform does not require prior approval of rate increases. Although the 2010 federal reform law encourages rate oversight by the states, none of its provisions require effective regulation of rates. While HHS reviews unreasonable rate increases, it has no power to deny any rate or to demand modification. States should be the primary regulators with federal backup if they fail. The report concludes that HHS should encourage prior approval regulation in the states through its bully pulpit and its grants to the states. Congress, however, should give HHS the authority to regulate rates when states fail to enact or enforce real prior approval laws. Uh, this is what Senator Feinstein and Representative Schakowsky have proposed. And let's so turn now to our panel, which will have much more expert commentary on all of this. Uh, Mila Kaufman is Maine Superintendent of Insurance. She has strengthened the state's oversight of insurers, particularly in holding down rates in the crucial small business market. She has brought an active consumer participation funding public challenges to unreasonable
reasonable rate increases in her state. And she has challenged insurers by considering their overall profitability when examining rates and won the right to do so in court. Harvey Rosenfield is Consumer Watchdog's founder and the author of Proposition 103, California's successful voter approved rate regulation for property and casualty. He's defeated insurers' constant legal challenges to the law and pioneered the state's effective public challenges to excessive rates, especially when an insurance commissioner has failed to take the duty seriously. <clears throat> Carmen Balber is Consumer Watchdog's DC director and co-author of the Can't Have One Without the Other Report. She's expert in Massachusetts post reform struggles with rate increases and its initial successes with stronger rate oversight. She's closely followed the regulatory process at HHS and the National Association of Insurance Commissioners. We'll begin with brief statements by each panelist and invite questions afterward. We start with Carmen, who will speak on what HHS is doing and cannot do to oversee and control health insurance rates. Thank you, Judy. 